Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh boy. I love both. Man. So this air is so dry that uh, it's, it's delicate on metal. So I guess it's a good place to find cars. I'm Tom Cotter. The first car I found, I was 12 years old. I'm 61 years old now and I'm still finding cars. And in this series, you'll see that there are still plenty of cars left. That's a really good buy. I wish I had x-ray glasses to look inside garages, man. I can't wait to see what's in here. We met a gentleman at dinner last night named William Taylor, and he's a sports car enthusiast in Denver. And he told us about somebody who has a bunch of old sports cars about two hours west of Denver. So we're heading up there now to see what we might find. an antique mall in Leadville, Colorado, and I'm told the man that owns this place, Bruce McAllister's got some cool old sports cars. So he owns this mall, we're gonna meet him, and he's gonna show us his sports cars. Oh, I bet this garage is how old? 100 years old? 1800, late 1800. Really? 80s and 90s. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh boy. Man. I love them both. Yeah. So that's the C? Yeah, 64C. So when was the last time you drove this? Oh, probably like 1979, 78, 79. What did it cost when you bought it? 600 bucks. And you bought it in Florida? Yeah. So it's got a little cancer up here. Yeah, a little bit on the front. That fender was um, the common thing on 356s. They just lap welded them on. Oh, yeah. So is there, there's no motor right now? Oh, yeah, it runs. Oh, it runs? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's got the, the proper C motor? Yeah. Solex? Yep. Uh, Zenith. Zenith, okay. Index. Mm -hmm. I bought both these when I was in high school. This is uh, 57 Carmen Gio. I bought it from the original owner. 57? Man. This little old lady, she said she ordered it and had to wait a year and a half to get it. That's an original tire off of it right there. No kidding. That's yeah, the German writing on it. Metzler or something? Oh, uh, no, it's a hot metal, I think. V, uh, BF Goodrich. Is it BF Goodrich? Wow. But if you look on the, the little writing is all in German. Hmm. So this, this you're gonna restore. Is this one for yeah. sale? Yeah. This, would you sell this one? Well, you know, everything. I can't keep everything. I'm, I'm not gonna get to everything because you're just getting started with what I've got, so. <laughs> I like this too. You know, old gears are, are wonderful cars. This one, just, this one would probably be the least one I'd like to sell just because of the personal attachment to it. I drove this thing all over the place. Wow. 36 miles per gallon, 40 to maybe 40 if I was easy. All right, I can't wait to see what's next. So these uh, buildings all have old cars in them. That's, that's pretty amazing. Here we go again. It's a little dark in here, I don't have any power. Two Porsches in one day. Is that another C? That's a C. Got a little Bondo on that baby. Yeah, but this has a funny story. This has a story, tell me a story. Well, it was, uh, the, the guy who bought it new was an Air Force pilot or something in Germany. And he bought it and drove it around in Germany for a couple of years and then brought it over. And then he smashed the front and started to do his own body work. Looks like he put the Bondo on with the back of a shovel. Jeez. But, and then and so you bought it just like this? Just like this, yeah. And, but I didn't buy it from him, I bought it from another guy. I'm mm -hmm. the third owner. Third owner from new? Mm -hmm. It's, it's 60... 67,000 miles on it. 64, 65? It's title is 65, but it's actually a 60, well, it was a 63 manufactured. It's a really low number. It's got the smooth hubcaps. With no yeah, yeah, I see that. And this one was what color? Is it British Racing Dolphin. Green? Dolphin Gray. Dolphin, oh, that's a great color. Yeah. Red interior? And then the blue. Oh, blue interior. Blue interior. Wow. You can see the original color on the dash. So there's like a Blau Punk radio in there? Yeah, it's untouched. It's been the guy I bought it. He bought it in 1982, and then it sat yeah. until I bought it, well, maybe five years ago. Did you get it locally? Yeah. UPS guy told me about it. <laughs> it it's you, like in this town? Yeah. Well, no, I, I bought it um, nearby. Isn't that but the something? U, you know, everybody knows I collect cars. Oh, there's this old Porsche sitting out in the field. You might want to buy it. I said, well, ask the guy if he wants to sell it. That's great. 
And it's, it's all complete? The, it's the engine? It, I haven't started it. I turned uh -huh. it over. I couldn't get it to fire. Same Zenith as carburetors, but I mean, it's so complete, right down to the air cleaners. Yeah. See, and these things right here, that blows hot air up onto the carburetors. Those are always gone. Really? Yeah. At least it them. keeps them from popping. Well, yeah, or just, just like a carburetor preheater. Yeah, wow. 67,000 miles. So what's the shape of this car ring besides it's, a fender? It's got some rust mm -hmm. and it's got a, a grafted fender just like all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is this the original paint? Uh, I, I don't know. I, can, I know the dash is if you can look at it. Dash, it's kind of a, it's okay, so it's much lighter. So it looks like it was painted silver at one yeah, point. Silver. Mm -hmm. Wow. The hmm. dolphin gray is kind of a, it's almost like a light, light blue. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Hmm. And so, would you sell this one? I'd sell this one. Hmm. I, I don't. I'm not in any urgent hurry. I understand. Yep. Great car. Great story. Wow. Great stuff. Well, that, that's pretty darn cool. I mean, here we are in like rural Colorado, and we've seen this morning uh, two Porsche 356s, which are like right now in such high demand by collectors, restorers, because you know. 40 years ago, people were throwing those cars away. That's rusty, and they'd junk it. Well, there's not many left anymore. And so uh, to find cars that have been kind of, uh, I don't want to say maintained, but somehow they're, they're not as, as bad as you would imagine them to be. That car we just saw sat outside for 30 years or so before he bought it, and the body looked pretty good. So this air is so dry that uh, it's, it's delicate on metal. So I guess it's a good place to find cars. I hope we find some more. Well, the stuff you're showing us is exactly what we hope to see. Yeah. Give people encouragement that they're still out there. I wish I had x-ray glasses to look inside garages, man. Jeez. I can't wait to see what's in here. Ah, race shop. You've had this how long? Uh, 10 years. It's original paint. Wow. It's been a race car since day one. This He traded in a 63 Jaguar E-Type on this car from the dealer. See, so the original Mini Cooper S was the hot rod Mini Cooper. A guy named John Cooper said, I think this Mini has got some potential. So he came out with a 1275cc version of it. And it had disc brakes and it had more power. It also had two gas tanks. And they, they would balance out side to side. Um, for a better weight distribution. And it's, it's supposedly the only Mini left that races in this country with the hydroelastic, according to the Mini Club. So yeah, is it what, 1340 or something? 1312. 1312. 1312. So this is a barn find Formula Ford? Yes. It's, a, it's an Eldon? Uh, Merlin. A Merlin, okay. And where'd you find this? Right in the next town down. Uh, it's a farm. It's indoors? Dirt road. Indoors? I, I think it was indoors. It was indoors there. So this is called a Formula Ford. It was a spec series racing series back in, uh, well, it started in the 60s. And this is a, a, a Ford Cortina engine. So every car was limited to this engine. And so it really separated the driver, driving talent from driver to driver as opposed to car to car because every car, regardless of the brand, had to have the same push rod motor. So what's interesting here is that you think about barn finds being like old Fords and old Chevys. You don't think about barn finds being Porsches and now we're finding barn find race cars. This, this is unusual, but it's not one of one. There, there are plenty of old race cars sitting in people's backyards and in garages. Somebody races, they retire the car, they retire themselves and, and if they, are not inclined to sell the car, they just push it in the back of the garage. And as Bruce said, this was laying around for 10 or 12 years, just a few miles from here. And he's got a great project. This car is so solid. It's, uh, you've got a wonderful discovery here.
We're at an appointment this morning in Leadville, Colorado, to see a, a yard full of cars. But as we woke up, we looked at the weather forecast and a snowstorm was approaching. It started to fall in the parking lot as we were loading up our cars. We decided to leave Leadville and drive towards Denver and get away from the storm. Well, it's followed us, so the snow is going to hit us here in a few minutes. We're driving down I-70 towards Denver at exit 226 and saw this place and saw a couple of old cars out in front. So we pulled over, went inside and talked to the owner, Stormy, who's got cars inside, cars in the yard over there and a yard full of cars up the road. So we're going to try to see as many as we can before this storm hits. Diamond Rio truck, 1934, 1960 Chrysler. Now I'm going to show you something. This is 1960 Chrysler four door. All right, no big deal, nice car. But I'm going to show you a 61 sister to this car. This is a 1961 Chrysler two door. Now I don't know if I've ever seen one like this. 61 Chrysler's got a 413 cubic inch V8 push button torque flight transmission. This was the one year where Chrysler tried to bring back some early styling to their cars. So if you look at these headlights, these headlights are separate from the body like a 34 Ford would have or something like that. These are not built into the body. You could unbolt these headlights. If you look back here at the taillights, these are called sparrow strainer taillights. And the reason they call them sparrow strainer is if a bird got caught in here, it would just strain it right through. Uh, they were popular with customizers back in the 60s. They put them on custom cars. So a very unique car. If you look at the steering wheel inside the car, the steering wheel is, is square. A very solid car, 1961, uh, and it's for sale. In fact, everything that Stormy has here, except for one or two cars, is for sale. This one he wants 14000 for. The body is solid. I mean, you could just clean this car up and drive it as is. I think fourteen grand is probably a fair price for a car that probably runs pretty well. It was last registered 1979. There's a 51 Chevy Coupe over here. He doesn't know if it runs, but you know this has got a stove bolt six cylinder motor in them. Not much can go wrong with them. Uh, it's got an automatic transmission, and he wants twenty five hundred bucks for this car. Well, I'd say you know, not a bad deal. A little bit of little bit of rust over here, but all in all, we've found that Colorado cars are in much better shape than uh, cars maybe up north or cars that we saw in California. Thirty nine Plymouth sedan and a 39 Plymouth Coupe, which is in front of the building. We'll take a picture of that in a moment. It doesn't have such a good front end, but he wants 20, I'm sorry, $4,000 for the pair. That's, that's a really good buy. Somebody was handy, wanted to swap around some sheet metal and have probably a pretty darn good running car for not a lot of money invested. This is a Nash tow truck made by Nash Cars. If, if a Nash vehicle broke down and had to be towed to a dealership, Nash didn't want Ford and Chevrolet and GMC trucks towing Nash vehicles to a Nash dealership. So Nash came out with a very limited number of trucks that could just be sold to dealerships. So this Nash truck was owned by a Nash dealership new. It was owned by uh, a shop and then Stormy got it. So Stormy's the third owner of this. It's only got 24,000 miles from new. If you look at this thing, it's amazing. Take a look at the gauges in here. But, but look at the shape of this thing, 1949. Look at the gauges, the knobs, the dashboard, the trim. The last time this was uh, lubricated was 25,000 miles, 25,529. Let's see what it's got now. It's got 26,630. Pretty amazing. So this, this truck is for sale. Uh, he has a number of people interested in it, but they haven't come to terms on a price yet, but about 18500 bucks, you could own one of the rarest trucks probably in the United States. There's only a handful of these left in the world because customers couldn't buy these things. Nash only built these for their own dealerships. Nash was not interested in getting in the truck business for retail purposes, only for hauling purposes. So there's only a few trucks in the world that have this cab, these doors, and because it's so solid and clean and original, uh, you wouldn't have a problem restoring this thing.
This is 1953 GMC cab over. See a lot of these trucks these days being converted to flatbeds or even campers. We're in the Colorado mountains. A hundred years ago, people were hunting for gold here, and I'm looking at a gold mine right over there. Well, we're hunting for gold today, only it's rust color. We, we saw these cars simply driving down the highway and looking at them. Sometimes it's that easy, and sometimes you have to talk to somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And that's what took us to Leadville to find a couple of garages with old Porsches. So as we're seeing, there's still plenty of cars out there. Just go out and find them. Happy hunting. And then this brick building, there's a Model T. Does that Judge McAllis? No, Judge... Uh, Reynolds? Reynolds. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, we met a lady up at the... I just bought a bowl but the, at the auto parts off the road, and she stopped and said, Oh, you got to meet Judge Reynolds. <laughs>